Um, the new album is is called fourteen ninety one. Fourteen ninety one. Like hashtag, but fourteen ninety one. Yeah, fourteen ninety one is is fourteen ninety one nation. That's uh, Red Cloud and myself. The, that's funny about fourteen ninety one is uh, it was actually supposed to be a concept album, mm-hmm. a crew album. Yeah, back in the day, and um, the members of it were myself, Red Cloud, um, Wob Canoe, and Joey Styles. Yeah, and that was supposed to be this like super, super native hip hop album. We, right. we were working on it, but then it just it didn't materialize. Uh, we all started. We all were doing our own thing, type thing, and it just never came. to Like fruit. how long ago but, are you talking about? Like two years ago, five years. I'm ago? talking years ago. Ten like years, years ago. ago right, right before a lot of everything was popping, like right, right before like Joey was just popping, and uh, the Res official thing started popping, and we were, we were looking for another. Another thing to get down on, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, Stomp and J-Mac were going to be producing it. But then it just kind of dwindled away and it didn't, didn't materialize. Right. You know? I thought it was going to be a great project, but it just didn't happen. But it, I guess it's, it's for the better. But 1491, uh, Red Cloud started running with the, the 1491 Nation, you know. And uh, if I, I don't know if you can see it. I got my tatty. Yeah. That's, that's 1491 Nation. I got that one done. And we're crew, like me and Cloud were the homeboys, and um, I, I figured if anybody can do this, and name an album fourteen ninety one, and you know, I, I it, it could be me, <laughs> you know. So like, uh, I I announced it. I told Cloud and him this is what my new album is, and he wants to jump on it. And I got some, I'm lining up some good things with some good people about this album. Uh, yeah. It's gonna be solely produced by. Uh, David Strickland. I'm not sure if you ever heard of him. No. His, David Strickland is from Eastern Eastern Canada, Toronto, New York area, okay. and whatnot. And uh, he is legendary, like status, native wise, not even native wise, just music wise. Like every major artist in Canada is he native? Worked with the ever. Yeah, he's a native dude. Okay. Look him up, David Strickland. David Strickland. And he. He, um, you know, that OVO, OVO Drake's record label, like he, yeah. he mixes and masters a lot of good stuff for them. He, he works closely with 40 and those guys and whatnot. And he, um, actually worked on Drake's Grammy winning Take Care album and whatnot. And he's on Eric Sermon's new album. And he actually, David Strickland just got a grant to, to produce his own album. So he's going to get his, his roster for that album is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Not just native wise. I'm talking like Wu Tang members and uh, Def Squad members and this and that. Like major hip hop heavyweights are going to be jumping on that. And on top of like, you know, major Canadian heavyweights like Cardinal and Socrates right. and this and that and myself. And you know, I'm very honored to be on that album. But I'm even very very honored that he he's producing my album now. Like he he sought out after me to work. Like I've heard about the guy, but I didn't really know too much fully about him until yeah. like I, I kept it real with him and I was like you know I'm not gonna lie with you I don't really know your dis- discography mm-hmm. what have you done and he sent me this thing dude with like six pages just straight up who he worked with and is he worked from everybody that's major in Canada to like Patty LaBelle and, and, and so the what was the, the reason state. why he sought you out did he say and he people have been telling him that he's got to work with me you okay. know, if you're gonna work with a native artist, you gotta work with Helly. Okay. And and I people were telling me I gotta work with him, and then it just so happens, uh, we I can't, I can't even remember how we came out to talk. We were, I, we were just talking about music, just all started like that, and then he's like, "Oh, I got these beats," and he sent me he sent me like nine beats, mm-hmm. and every one of them fire, just perfect for what I'm doing. And yeah. like this album, I'm calling it 1491 because I'm gonna I'm not. I'm I'm not going to do that shit that people expect from like a native artist like what you said, you know, Canada comes over with a lot of booty shaking type music and partying and shit like that. That's, you know, that that's not really the whole image. Yeah. That I really want to portray any any more in a sense, you know, cuz like I've done that. Been there. Well, like I just want to clarify, I meant that as a compliment and everybody down here is No, no, like, no, no. You know, no, I I know that, but I'm just telling you from my point. Yeah. You know, like 
I've been there, done that. They call me Helen back because you know I've been there, done that. Yeah. And whatever, whatever, you know. And now my my whole message for fourteen ninety one is going to be kind of, you know, stand up, stand up for your rights, stand up for who you are. I'm not going to go and be like totally super major political type shit, but it's going to be very more conscious, conscious type shit. You know, I don't want to be on that backpack shit. I'm going to balance it out, but. No, no, that's fine. I love that. I I love that because like even listening. You're gonna see. Yeah, you're gonna see. It's gonna be yeah. fun. You know, it's it's gonna be an album where like this last album I did family over everything, I didn't really want to cater to nobody but myself. Mm-hmm. And that's that's sad. I don't I don't I hope it doesn't come off as nah, fuck like, you know, that shit. cocky or asshole ish. Nah, but you know, no. like I just want to focus on myself and make sure that that I want to make music that I like and my kids like. Nope, you know, I love that. That's refreshing to hear you say that because most people, they're too busy kissing somebody else's ass or like, oh, if I make this the, the way that. I feel, they're I, not going to buy that's, it. There's a reason why I stopped music for so long, too, is because, you know, like the whole output of it kind of got stagnant to me. Uh-huh. On top of my own grind and, and just being in, 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 in certain addictions, but like a lot of the music kind of just kind of got, you know, I, you know, when you do it so long, you kind of burn out. Yeah. And I had I had to find my love back again for for the music. I had to find out what made me fall in love with music again. And for me, what made me fall in love with music again was just the, the passion of it. Yeah. And and the understanding of it that music has always taken care of me. And in the time that I didn't use music, man, I'm not gonna lie, fuck, it was it was some some different shit. Trying to work different jobs and this and that and. You know, going to school and this and that. Like, I, I don't, I don't knock anybody's hustle who does that and, and goes out because they live a life that's that's fucking. You know, like I respect that wholeheartedly because I live that. And now, I just noticed that I don't like, I don't like making other people money. I like going around and then doing my own thing. And then, amen. And, and music, music has always taken care of me whenever I, I put my head fully into it. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was writing my album, I was selling cars at the time. I was selling cars on the phone, phoning people up I didn't even know and talking to them into buying vehicles, you know? Yeah. And and that's, I guess that's the charisma that I had. Something that that made me understand that, you know, I could still talk to people and I can still get up there and capture people's minds. And then I started writing more and I started doing these collabos with these other artists. And, and you know, I understand that, that struggle and the hustle, but now I... I officially started the business. You know, Helen Back Music is my business now, and yeah. uh, my own boss now. And I'm a stay-at-home pop, so you can hear my daughter. Yeah, I wanted to get to that. So, is that your record label, or, or you know, or... And, and, you know, like I, I do, I do music 24/7 now. Right. Like I don't. But is is I that your is it. that your label, your own record label? Is it a distribution service? What do you guys do there? You know, honestly, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna be doing with it. All I know is that. That's a hundred percent mine, and I own it. Yeah. And whatever I' gonna be doing around it is gonna be coming out in this next year. Like I'm, I'm thinking of like even doing like, like I, I was thinking of even releasing a record, a, a traditional record with mm-hmm. the with the with um my wife is was is a traditional hand drum singer and I, she's amazing, talented, mm-hmm. talented, talented, talented. And she's she's awesome, but she's never released a record. So okay. you know that's a possibility. You know, I'm, 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 I'm looking, I can't rap forever, basically. I, mm-hmm. I look at it the way I have it. I'm going to be doing albums and helping people make music after that. But, you know, like, I want to set myself up to where I can be able to make decisions like that and help other people, help other artists. Yeah. Help, help younger artists, help the youth. I mean, no one did that shit for me back in the day. Like, nowadays, it's so easy for artists to be artists. Yeah. I mean, you go out and... Buy an iPhone and download GarageBand and boom, you can go out and record some shit. You know what I mean? And back in the day, you couldn't do that shit. Back yeah. in the day, you had to really actually grind. And that's where I want to take it back. It's the actual grind. Dude, I remember, I remember I remember know? recording my, like I've been recording music, you know, ever since I fell in love with it in uh, in the 80s, right? And uh, I uh, I remember I would trade weed and beer 
because I had built my own recording studio into my uh, room, um, and I would trade weed and beer, you know, for people to come over, and I would record them on tapes. This is back back in the tapes days, right? And so yeah. I would have I would have clean tapes sitting on the side with the with the tape case and everything, and then so people would bring over weed and beer, and I was like, okay, <laughs> we'll start recording and jamming and stuff, and. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Now, now, when you talk about uh, Hell and Back music, the mm-hmm. uh, one of the things I know you already fucking know this, but licensing. You, I mean, I would encourage you to get into licensing music because you've been doing a lot of stuff. You just got done talking about Apple. I've been actually that's that's been my that's been the hustle that I've been I've been focusing a lot more on getting my music out there, mm-hmm. and I've I recently licensed a bunch of the the new music to Blackstone. I'm sure if you heard of Blackstone, it's a native TV show yeah. on APTN and in other places. It's really well, yeah, I've heard of it. Really I've, run into, I've run across it, like when I go to the Canadian websites. Um, but I've never watched the actual show. You got and you—that's another yeah. thing. You well, fuckers up in well, Canada, man. It. You got some damn native TV shows that we don't got down here. Yeah. We got our own native APTN. Our own yeah, channel. but I like, but that's the thing. I, another thing I, I can touch base on later on, but um. Like I, I've been just trying to get my my music on on movies, on commercials, on TV shows, mm-hmm. on, you know, because that's that's a good wave to jump on. Yeah, I the way I look at it, it's just another way to get your music more out there. I mean, I had to, yeah. I, I I really had to reinvent my whole grind and hustle because, you know, uh, we went from recording whole albums to, you know, the whole. The whole thing where people were just selling ringtones, and then there was from ringtones they were just selling singles, and then mm-hmm. you know like they didn't really have to have a whole album. You can get rich off of a single, so people's yeah. focus were that. That this and that. now, like even just hard copy albums are like almost going to be obsolete soon. Yeah. Anybody can just go download something and this and that. So it's you have to always reinvent your own hustle. And, yeah. And right now the main hustle that I've been doing is just getting on my soul can up and going out there. And pushing my music towards good opportunities like that to get my music on videos and music mm-hmm. on movies and whatnot. And the way I, I that made it possible is like I didn't even know we had music on on a movie called Fubar. You ever watch Fubar? Never, never heard of it. Never. Look it up. It's a movie about two Canadian dudes, old rockers and whatnot, and they're from Fort Mac. Or they do the oil fields. <laughs> it's it's a messed up movie. Yeah. But it's that. I, I didn't know that we had music on there. I hmm. had no clue until I was watching it on TV. All of a sudden, I heard my music. I heard my man Tommy Slav rapping and then myself rapping. And, you know, and I, they paid us. Back in the day, they, like because I used to get just random little money from, from everybody at Res Official from time to time. Yeah. That was one of them. Uh-huh. I guess they gave me some money for that because, and I didn't know, I didn't care at the time. I was like, okay, well, whatever. But now that showed me that it's possible. So I took that. Now, like you're gonna hear my music on some a lot of good things coming up, and you know, and then anybody out there reading this or seeing this or whatever, you can see this and hit me up, Hallenbag at gmail dot com. I got tons of new music on the rise. It's mm-hmm. yeah, man. You know, shit. <laughs> I like that. Well, no, no, it's it's a because it, I know that it's real important licensing. I, that's like one of the things I've been preaching to people is go figure out license, go 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 here, go there, wherever. Because licensing is super important. You can license artwork. Audio, visuals. Yeah, I mean, you can do. Yeah. You can license everything. just Image, about anything. Your face image. Yeah. All that shit. You yeah. Can anything. You know. You, as long as you got, as long as you got a, a marketable product. Yeah. You can always get up there and have fun with it. You know? Oh yeah, so, yeah, definitely. And, and that's what's cool about this is that it's not even work, man. Like I don't look at this as work. I, I call it work because I have to keep telling myself it's work. Yeah. But it's not work because I love doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm not getting up every morning dreading, oh God, I gotta go to work. I gotta do this. <laughs> You know, I'm getting up knowing that I get to chill, you know, mm-hmm. and I get to make money and then and I have to take care of my family. Yeah. You know, my wife right now, she, she's working at, she's working a job too mm-hmm. and everything. And, you know, like I'm, I'm bringing, I bring in the money too and she brings in her money too. And, you know, that's what makes us a family. We, mm-hmm. we, we handle everything together and we tackle everything together. And that's yeah. the reason why I married my wife. She's, she's my best fucking friend. Yeah. I don't. I don't trust anybody out there. Really, I don't really trust a lot of people. But I know I can trust my wife. You know, I have friends. I really do. I know I do. But like, I re- I really just love my wife. My wife is is the main person in my life. Friends yeah. are friends. My wife 
my wife and she's my best person everything i, I, hear you. I believe in everything we do so you know yeah 